If I asked you to think of an ancient civilization, there is a high probability that the Romans would take center stage in your mind. And perhaps this association is well deserved. The Roman Empire did span three of the world's continents at its height, and it lasted for over a millennium. Their engineering practices are still in use, their terminology is still a part of technical discourse within many fields, and their buildings still stand to this day. Each facet of Roman history has been poured over, contested, and exploited for reasons of prevailing ideology. And while it's well understood the influence that classical Greece had on Rome, there is a lesser known civilization without whom Rome as we know it simply would not exist. Meet the Etruscans. Originating from Etruria, the region we now call Tuscany, the Etruscans thrived long before the rise of Rome. Their forms of expression, their pantheon of gods, and their elaborate burial rituals all seeped into Roman culture. The Etruscan civilization predates even the classical era of Greece, stretching back before the period of time that we refer to as ancient Greece. In fact, on the relationship between Greece and Etruria, it's not entirely clear just which culture influenced the other. These are not just any ruins. These are the remnants of Etruscan aqueducts. Long before Rome's crucial infrastructure provided fresh water to their urban centers, the Etruscans had already mastered the engineering of these waterways, some of which still lie hidden amidst the Tuscan landscape. And it wasn't just engineering. You will notice the striking resemblance between the Latin and Etruscan alphabets. This is of course no coincidence. The Etruscan alphabet was a precursor to the Latin alphabet, and the Latin alphabet is used across the world today as the most fundamental component of recorded ideas. If you're watching this video, then the chance is high that this is the alphabet that you read in every day. And the Romans did not conjure it out of thin air. It was adapted from the Etruscan script. And when we look at the alphabet devised by the Etruscans, the similarity is clear. From architecture to societal norms, from divination practices to public ceremonies, traces of Etruscan civilization can be found interwoven with Roman culture. Their art, filled with vivid colors and intricate details, not only showcased their daily life and beliefs, but also offered a glimpse into the world that Rome would eventually inherit. For in the shadows of great empires lie tales of unsung progenitors. The Etruscans might not have built Rome, but they surely laid its foundations. If we take a deep look into Etruscan society, we see a world that looks remarkably Athenian. Both men and women graduated from Etruscan universities, and Etruscan women could own property as well as attend political debates. They were known for their religious tolerance as neighboring city-states were absorbed into their sphere of influence, a quality that would one day become a hallmark of Roman pragmatism. Some of the earliest kings of Rome were themselves ethnically and ideologically Etruscan. As the societies mixed and grew into one another, the Etruscan way of life began to leave a truly indelible mark on the fabric of Rome. So what are the origins of this so often overlooked ancient culture? Where do these people come from? Well, this is where things start to get strange. To answer this question of cultural heritage, we turn to the most reliable resource available to historians, the written word. For context, the study of written language serves as the gateway to understanding the origins and evolution of a civilization. Through inscriptions, linguistic choices, even misspellings, historians can trace the linguistic development of a society and understand its origins. It would be fair to say that language is less a piece of the puzzle than that the puzzle itself is made of language. Language is thought. Language is culture. I can therefore not overstate the strangeness of the fact 
that with no known relatives, the Etruscan language is an isolate, not just on the European continent, but in the entire linguistic world. While isolated languages exist in Europe, such as Hungarian and Finnish, these are by no means anomalous. Their roots can be linked to many languages stemming from the Eurasian steppe tribes, and their histories are tied to known periods of invasion. By contrast, a language with no relatives, like that spoken by the Etruscans, is as rare as it is confounding. These have long been the inspiration for sprawling alternate theories of human history, from pre-Ice Age civilizations to alien visitation. And as long as anomalies like this remain unexplained, who are we to discredit such ideas? Our best theory for the origin of the Etruscans is that they were indigenous to the Italian peninsula, perhaps surviving the invasion of those we call the Indo-Europeans all the way back in prehistory. So few things about these people are clear. One is that their influence on Rome was profound. Another is that their legacy has been all but lost and their achievements forgotten. There is no clear point where the Etruscan way of life ceases to exist. Rather, it is eroded by the slow winds of time. As Rome expanded and became more dominant, the Etruscans were gradually assimilated into the Roman sphere. By the 4th century BCE, much of Etruria had been annexed by Rome. This wasn't an overnight process, but a gradual incorporation over centuries. Etruscan cities became Romanized. Their elite began to speak Latin, adopt Roman customs, and eventually, their distinct identity faded into obscurity. While the political and linguistic identity of the Etruscans disappeared, their cultural and religious influence persisted in Rome. Gods, architecture, and art were integrated into the machinery of Roman society. And in the subsequent thousand years of Roman glory, the Etruscan influence would live on. To this day, the legacy of the Etruscans is imprinted on every Roman cobblestone.